Let's get it. Mike Semper Vivi here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in, iHeart, American Forces Radio, sportsbyline.com, over the air affiliates like KMAV, 99 KMSR, and the Mightier 1090. Maybe you're listening on podcast or a replay on SiriusXM or maybe video streaming on Twitch or YouTube. However you're joining me today, I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully wherever you are, it's sunny outside. And if not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. It's a beautiful day on my portion of Delmarva. 50 degrees, it's sunny. There is no chance in the forecast for The Rock to come and Bigfoot. Uh, the, the beauty of the day, that, that is not possible. The Rock in here, Bigfoot and everything. Our very own filthy Tom Lawler. Our, our very own fil- filthy, he wasn't even filthy. He was clean Tom Lawler. He was scrubbed Tom Lawler. Whatever antonym that you want to come up with, that's what he was doing. He was Clark Kent last night working the WWE WrestleMania 40 press conference at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. He is going to be filling us in on everything that took place last night. All the vulgarity, all the uh, the, the, the partying. Were there amuse-bouches and champagne passed around to the press? Well, Filthy Tom is going to tell us if there was or not. So he's going to be here. And of course, that leads us all to Fox tonight and SmackDown. And last week, The Rock showed up. This week, we know Triple H is going to show up in the role of Paul Levesque, I guess. I'm not sure which one he's going to show up as. Maybe maybe it's both names, but he's going to address what took place at the press conference last night and all the hullabaloo around Cody Rhodes choosing Roman Reigns after all of this nonsense as his opponent for WrestleMania. I don't think there's anybody that can give you a definitive reason on why things have turned out the way that they have, but we will do our best to talk about it here today. We'll also talk about what AEW's got coming up this weekend on Rampage and Collision, the last matches of Kazuchika Okada and Will Ospreay as New Japan contracted talent, and a whole lot more. We'll be back, Wrestling Observer Live. Welcome back to the show. Mike Semper, VB and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. You know we do this show right here for an hour at a time every single day, but if you want us 24-7, you can find us on Twitter slash X. I am at Semper VB. Filthy is at Filthy Tom Lawler. The website is at W-O-N-F-4-W, and the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. I'd also love it if you'd make the wrestling news part of your day as well. Everything you need to know to get your day started, get you up to date, or get you to your favorite long-form wrestling review pod like Wrestling Observer Radio with Dave and Brian. Each episode of the Wrestling News is between 5 and 15 minutes long every single day of the year and is usually posted at about 9 a.m. Eastern Time. No clickbait, no speculation, no rumors, just the Wrestling News. Find it wherever you find your favorite podcasts or head on over to TheWrestlingNews.com and at Wrestling News AV on Facebook and Twitter. WWE held a press conference last night, Thursday night. In Las Vegas at T-Mobile Arena, it was streamed on both Peacock and WWE's YouTube channel, among other places. Our own filthy Tom Lawler was there, as I said, in his role as Clark Kent, clean Tom Lawler, scrubbed Tom Lawler, filthy. What was it like being a credentialed member of the media in that den of wolves that you were in? It was everything I had ever dreamed of, Mike. Being able to be mere feet away from Sean Ross Sapp, mere inches and, you know, seats away from Denise Salcedo. I saw Nick Hausman before he unceremoniously left the premises. And I on his own free will of his own free will, or was he? Uh, yeah, uh, I believe I believe he talked okay. about it on Twitter. Please. There was a big hang up because really? a lot of the media members believed that this was a press conference when in reality it was more of a Rally. avenue for some angles to be shot. There were no questions to be asked. I had some of the hard hitters ready to go. And of course, they avoided me at all costs. But It was about an hour and a half long of interviews, angles, pageantry, very similar to some of the events we've seen from the UFC over the past few years where they 
talk about what's upcoming and they card out the fighters and they all talk trash. And I mean, in retrospect, this worked. Everybody's talking about it today. It's the big news in wrestling. We still, still, still don't know what is going on with the WrestleMania main event. Is it going to be some one-on-one -on -one matches? Is it going to be a four-way? Is it going to be a three-way? Is it going to be a tag match and then a singles? Is it going to be some sort of tournament? What is going on in the main event? We don't know, but what we do know is that The Rock showed up and like you said, he big-footed everybody, he big-timed everybody, slapped Cody Rhodes in the face, buried Seth Rollins on the mic, stood in front of Roman Reigns repeatedly. For better or worse, this was The Rock show in a lot of ways. What were your thoughts on how it played out, Mike? And I can, I can lend some more information as time goes on. The little clips it. I saw of it, they made sure to to make it look like it was a big rollicking affair, and it obviously was very loud from what the miking was. Now, it wasn't as loud as I thought it was going to be because we ended up finding out later on by way of WWE, they are saying there were about 3,400 people there. You know, if you take that number at face value... That still is not a lot of people to be put into the T-Mobile arena. When you went in there, did it look like they had it originally or set up for more people? Or did it look like they had it cordoned off where they pretty much knew what they were getting in there and they were prepared for that? The setup to me seemed to be, and I looked at the seating chart afterwards to try to get a better idea of how many people you know, they expected, but the seating looked to be about one third to half of the arena. There were a couple of sections behind the hard cam where there were no fans, but I, you said you thought there was going to be a bigger pop. It was going to be louder. It was insane inside there. The fans were going crazy back and forth before any of the superstars came out. There were dueling chants of, we want Cody. We want Rock. Rocky sucks. Cody sucks. From different sides of the arena. So, you it, you know, like in WWE, you usually have the crowd will do a dueling chant and one side will say one thing and one will say the other. Well, here, both sides were saying multiple things. So it was chaos well, the entire was time. Was it more of the case that the fans that were there were saying everything just because they love being there and they love chanting stuff and they're actually saying Cody sucks and then saying Roman sucks as well? I definitely caught a few people <laughs> saying we want we want Cody, Cody sucks. <laughs> but they were into it regardless. And they were into pretty much everybody that showed up there from the onset. Michael Cole was the first one out alongside CM Punk, who the crowd went crazy for. There was no waffling back and forth. CM Punk was over big time with the crowd, as was Big E, as was Pat McAfee. The crowd chanted all of their names. There was even a Michael Cole chant from a the Michael audience. A Michael Cole chant. Yes, there was a Michael Cole chant <laughs> from the audience. Uh, those were the hosts. They were kind of set up in the media section, I guess you could say. Uh, despite referencing it many times, CM Punk did not punch anyone in the face. Although I thought he had a good point in that he thinks Cody and Seth Rollins should have stood up for themselves more and punched back at The Rock and Roman Reigns in that main event segment. But after we got a little bit of talking from the talking heads, they showed a video package. Triple H, who will appear on SmackDown this evening, came out, and he gave a long rundown of WrestleMania history, some of the superstars who have helped build it. No mention of Vince McMahon, of course. Also, no mention of Pete Rose, who's been a star of WrestleMania many years. No mention of Doink the Clown, who once showed up and faced off against himself at WrestleMania. So some any, of the wait, luminaries. Any, any mention of Akibono? No mention of Akibono versus oh. Big Show. Oh. No. Yeah. Damn. But, uh, yeah, Triple H then said, are you ready? But first he let us know, we ain't seen nothing yet. 
it's a new era and we ain't seen nothing yet, which quite frankly worries me based on what we've seen recently. Then he, he got us going, are you ready? Well, you better be. And then nothing happened. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> Michael, Michael called Pat McAfee. Went to a video package of Bianca Belair, I believe, who, of course, the crowd loved. She left. We had uh, Rhea Ripley come out, a big star. And, of course, she was cut off by Becky Lynch, who said that if Rhea Ripley can get past Nia Jax, Becky is going to take Mammy. She's going to bend her over. Mammy? Yeah. She said she's going to bend her over. And teach her who's boss, because that's what happens when the man comes around. Crowd loved that, as did I. <laughs> and then we had the main event segment, I guess you could call it, with Roman Reigns. He came out. He said, it's not up to Cody, it's up to me. And I'm choosing The Rock for WrestleMania. Well, actually, Seth Rollins was out there first. I apologize. I've got this mixed up. He's easy to forget about, especially the way he's been treated here by everybody I'll recently. I will be honest, I thought he was over to a degree that I did not expect, especially live. The crowd went crazy for him. They would not stop cheering his song. And really, I thought he came out looking better at the end of this than he did going into it. Because he was the one getting in the Rock and Roman's face at the end of it. Not Cody, as Cody had been slapped. And Cody actually, I'd have to rule that a knockdown technically, because he took a knee off those four fingers to the face from old Dwayne. But we'll cover more of the WrestleMania kickoff show when we come back on Wrestling Observer Live. Hello, Mike Sempervivi here, filthy Tom Lawler, talking about his experiences yesterday in Las Vegas, where he lives. WWE came to his city the same way the Super Bowl has come to his city. They had to actually get a pass. They had to inform Filthy Tom that they were coming to town and they, it, if it was okay to have their event there. And Filthy said, yes, you can come on in. It's a flight zone for you. It's not for everybody, though. But Filthy, tell us more about this main event here because we actually got a, a, a flow chart. Uh, which I was not expecting out of The Rock, who who went and described his entire family history to us. Yeah, The Rock let us know uh, before there were shots fired that he was going to show us something really cool on the screen, is what he said. I got something really cool. That's what he said. I got something well, really cool to show you guys. Well, you, and you guys it wasn't going to be one of his movies. He's... Wow. Well, he said... You better respect it. And then they threw up a graphic of the Bloodline family tree. <laughs> they which regurgitated the graphic. I don't know, Mike. I don't know if this was knowledge to me before and I've just seemingly forgotten it. But my brain was blown when The Rock said, Our great-grandfather's took a blood oath to become family. Is that legally binding? Can you do that? These guys I, are not... Uh, so they're not technically related by blood? Well, I mean, Their ancestors were blood brothers? Well, I mean... What does a blood oath consist of? I need it, more information. Well, I mean, it's usually the, the slicing like, of a of a hand or something and then th that together you know it's apparently what what jack briscoe says that ole anderson tried to do to him to keep georgia championship wrestling together and uh i don't know if i can actually say in our politically correct age what jack briscoe's response to the polish ole anderson was but uh suffice to say he was uh not down with it well the Mayavia and Anawaii families were down with it because now we have the bloodline. And as you said, The Rock threw that graphic up. The crowd went mild at best, which <laughs> That's I believe good. was the... Well, I, I think in some ways it was the intended reaction. Aye. There's no way with the delivery he gave that he expected the crowd to cheer this graphic when it was thrown up there. This, of course, leads to Cody Rhodes coming out because 
the bloodline is not the only royal family, as The Rock and Roman Reigns have said now many times. Cody Rhodes came out. Oh, I thought you were going to say Robert Fuller. No, you got to... It's too old of a reference, isn't it? I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, Cody, Cody comes out. He says that their ancestors would have been ashamed if they could see them right now. The Rock slaps them. I've, I've got the timeline all mixed up because prior to this, Cody came out. And what he said was... I've got a choice to make, and for WrestleMania, I choose Roman Reigns. So we now had Roman Reigns choose The Rock, Cody choose Roman Reigns. We don't know what's going on. Cody, do they says know what's that, going on? Sorry, I don't know that they need to right now. I guess not. <laughs> Enough we... people are seemingly invested in it and making up excuses for the lack of a coherent storyline right now. So, Hey, I mean, it's not, it, it, it's getting buzz, which is what it was intended to do. So Cody says that he wants Roman reigns. He says that their ancestors would be ashamed. And then the rock, if you look at the picture of the rock connecting with this slap on Cody's face, the rocks hand is about the same size as poor Cody's head. Seemingly, Four fingers to the side of the jaw. Cody takes a knee. Triple H and the staff get in his way. Seth Rollins, who's injured, may I mind you, has to stand up for not only Cody Rhodes, but also himself as he had been eviscerated, buried by The Rock and Roman Reigns. had been called the B-team multiple times, the loser squad by the bloodline members and now after the live action we were left with no answers seemingly and michael cole cm punk Big E, pat mcafee they wrapped it up at the desk and then we went backstage for one more question for triple h and you know before he could really give much of an answer the rock and Roman Reigns come into frame, along with Paul Heyman. The Rock is so large that at many times you can't see where Roman Reigns is. I don't know if this is by design. I don't know if this is happenstance. But The Rock, certainly in the foreground, he's he black-atomed Roman right out of the picture. <laughs> and he says... If Cody talks that ish about our family again, I'll slap the freaking taste out of his mouth. Something to that effect. It was bleeped out. Apparently, if you check my ex, my Twitter, at Filthy Tom Waller, you can find some of the only unedited footage of this promo as a real broadcast journalist would provide. And uh, that was essentially the end of the kickoff show, Mike. Was there a mad rush to get out of there? Or uh, did, did it look like a lot of people spent the $2,500 or whatever it was to to get their their 14 karat gold lanyard or whatever it is and have a drink and a conversation with Triple H? There was a mad rush by me to get out of there. That's I'll it. tell you that much. <laughs> well, Hey, you know, did you? There was did, a, there you, was a line. I'll tell you, there was a huge line wrapped around the building when I showed up at about three o'clock, of people how, waiting to get in. So, how far away uh, from there is the sphere? Because was there a dude who walked up in the sphere yesterday? <laughs> like, how do you do that? I'm scared of heights, so I can't imagine yeah. going like a foot up without throwing up off the thing. Like this dude walked up the sphere. Yeah, I believe it may have been on Wednesday. Uh, a guy scaled the sphere in protest, I believe, for women's pregnancy rights. Uh, I saw today that he caused over $100,000 worth of damage. And while I am wholeheartedly for what he is, don't do something stupid like this, people. 
please. I hope this bonehead has to pay for it out of his own pocket. I would assume so. I would assume so. But uh, does that have anything to do with tonight's SmackDown? No. But it's a way oh. to transition into it yeah. because the, we don't the know what's is, going on there either. It's about a, it's about two miles away is my guess. Thank you. Thank you. But the Spectrum Center in Charlotte, North Carolina is very far away from Las Vegas. But that is where SmackDown is going to be tonight. As I mentioned a little bit earlier this afternoon, we got the announcement that Paul Triple H Levesque would be there to address all of the fallout from yesterday's press conference in Vegas. Also, they added Bailey to the show to discuss being kicked out of damage control and choosing EO Sky as her opponent for WrestleMania. Also announced women's elimination chamber qualifying match, Bianca Belair against Meechan Mia Yim. We already have Becky Lynch in that match. Liv Morgan will face Zoe Stark on Raw on Monday to find out who's going to be the next person after tonight's match leading into the into the uh, the Perth Elimination Chamber. Number one contenders match for the WWE tag team titles, Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate against DIY. GM Nick Aldis will be announcing the new opponent for United States champion Logan Paul. Last week, the show did 2.469 million viewers, the fifth week in a row that it's done over 2.38 million viewers. The rating in the key 18 to 49 year old demographic, 0.74, 970,000 viewers. As Tom mentioned, this is getting a lot of buzz. Regardless of what you think about it, if you're judging a success by the amount of mainstream attention that you get and the television ratings that you get, there is no doubt that this WrestleMania and the build to it is going to be considered incredibly successful. It's just in its moment right now when you have a Cody Rhodes that has told Roman Reigns that he had to have his belt to finish the story because that was the one that was in my father's hands that they ripped out of it at Madison Square Garden. And then he tells the man who has just completely emasculated his opponent, what we thought was going to be his opponent, and calling him second best and go and be Cody the best of the rest. Cody said, yes, I do want your belt, but I think that's a great idea. I do want to be the best of the rest, and I'll get back to you later because The Rock's got something to say about it. Then he comes out and says, no, I decided it is going to be you, and then The Rock's pissed off, and The Rock and Roman are together. And I guess the new speculation, Tom, we're going to get a tag team match on night one of WrestleMania, and then we're going to get, I guess... Two championship matches for both Seth Rollins and for Roman Reigns against Cody Rhodes on Sunday's WrestleMania, I guess. We'll see what Tom thinks about that. I already know what the chat thinks about that. Maybe we'll let you know what they think when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Wrestling Observer Live. Well, it was coming in hot there, wasn't it? Ghost face, baby. Damn right. Oh, man. Not only that, I think Ari the Rugged Man in that one, and uh, who else? Cool G Rap, actually, in that one as well, too. So, a lot, lot, lot of New York there going on there. Anyway, but that none of that matters right now, Filthy. And I don't want to stay on this topic for a whole lot longer here, but the speculation right now... The Rock and Roman Reigns against Cody and Seth for night one. That opens up the door for night two to be bookended by title matches. The first one being Seth Rollins defending his title against anybody that would decide to enter the elimination chamber and then go ahead and win it uh, coming up here in Australia. And then closing the show, Cody Rhodes against Roman Reigns. Will there be some surely... Issues with The Rock in all of this that leads to more Roman Reigns and The Rock and beef over the head of the table. Uh, does that, am I crazy for thinking that's the direction they're going? It could be. I mean, we could also seemingly, I guess we could get a three way. I don't think that The Rock and Roman Reigns' little story here is over. It seems like they were too chummy too quick, if yeah. you ask me. And even if. It just so happens that The Rock was standing in front of Roman repeatedly. 
I think that they'll make something of that. So I expect a rift between those two and a big one coming up. But, you know, maybe we will see this tag team match. Maybe we'll see something like a Lucha de Apuestas match where there's a bet of some sort on the line. Maybe we get a rivalry tag team match where the winners get to main event the second night of WrestleMania. Maybe maybe aliens descend from the heavens and, you know, we get Volcan versus Tamara in the main event just to appease <laughs> me. I don't think that last one is going to happen, but there's so many scenarios that they've presented in this main event scene now. And like I said, I think that coming out of this, one of the people that really is going to make out the best is Seth. Because what was his role before, right? If he was just facing Cody, he's certainly in the second tier of angles, of storylines going into WrestleMania. And now he's seemingly inserted into this situation with The Rock, with Roman Reigns, with Cody. And I'm telling you, the crowd was hot for this guy. I guess it could be it could be argued that it makes his situation harder or it makes him hotter, I guess. But then again, the way he's been torn down, you know, you needed to give the guy something to to stabilize him again. And, you know, the way he's been ripped by everybody is being second tier and constantly making mistakes and everything else. And I don't know. I don't know how long he is for that title anyway when you got Drew McIntyre and and Damian Priest and Sami Zayn now lurking around as well. It's going to be going to be kind of interesting there. WWE starting a new show that they announced last night, WWE Speed. It was announced by Michael Cole during the press conference. Speed report, on X. On X. A report in the We're Hollywood going all the way here. <laughs> all the Hollywood. amphetamines in your system straight from the ring. It's a pure just weed, whites, and wine style. It's just pure 70s trucker going on here. The Hollywood Reporter did not give a dollar figure, but says the agreement is for two years and 52 episodes a year. WWE had tr filed for this trademark on December 18th, 2023. It also has already taped matches for the uh, show, taped them on December 15th. Well, Axiom against Cedric Alexander and Bronson Reed against Nathan Frazier. Not sure if that is actually going to end up on the show or not, but they did at least tape it for uh, speed purposes. Uh, basically, co goes down like this. You're going to have five-minute time limit matches where the winner of the match receives a point, the loser is docked a point, and if the bout goes to a time limit draw, no points are awarded a five-minute countdown clock will appear on the video wall during the contest. So there you go. Um, well, yeah. Mike, on the plus side, mm -hmm. I'm sure I'll enjoy the action. But in about 10 years, I'll get another thing to talk about on the airwaves along the lines of Brawl for All, along the lines of Mixed Match Challenge. Super Astros. Yeah, I used to love Super Astros. I did too. Yeah. And I actually like jacked in metal because I would see matches like S.A. Rios against Samoa Joe. Like you would see the, some of the most random matches in the late 90s and early 2000s if you went early uh, to the shows and caught the tapings of, of those types of events. You get some of the most random people in the world. But you also get some random people on Rampage. And that show is tonight. It was taped on Wednesday at the Footprint Center in Phoenix, Arizona. Here is your spoiler-free lineup because you'll never be able to guess who wins any of these matches. A six-man tag, the Undisputed Kingdom of Matt Taven, Mike Bennett, and Roderick Strong against the Best Friends Chaos Trio of Orange Cassidy, Rocky Romero, and Trent Beretta. Matt mm. Seidel will face off against Mystico, Chris Stantlander, mm. and Willow Nightingale against Ruby Soho and Soraya. Mm. And Filthy, I, I know this one is going to be pretty tough to predict but it's the young bucks against mondo rocks and robbie lit did they make those guys up you think those are actually like guys on the indies and their real names or do you think they brought two guys in and just gave them those names they may be creative characters from the video game it's 
something else. But, uh, yeah, apparently, too, by the way, the Young Bucks are still wearing the all-white blood-soaked gear that they had on Wednesday after they beat down Darby Allen and Sting. So that is what's taking place on Rampage tonight. Collision is live on TNT tomorrow night from the Dollar Loan Center in Henderson, Nevada. Adam Copeland, who has become Mr. Saturday Night, will cut a promo. AEW International Champion Orange Cassidy will face Tomo Hira Ishii. Non-title match, World Women's Champion Tony Storm against Queen Aminata, who is still red hot, except she's 0-17 on she's on every She's on every show. <laughs> I losing. love her, and it's like they keep like, oh, man, yeah, she's been hot, and it's like she kept losing. Now you it's, know, well, she's going to get the big one at some point. How about just letting her win? How about that? My, my favorite part about it is that she doesn't win, but she walks down the ramp and she puts her finger up. Says she's number one. That's, <laughs> you know what? No, too? you're like number twenty eight if we're going with the rankings. But <laughs> I, but, I I, actually, but she's good. I like watching her. I mean, so do I. And I would give her the win here. The thing is, you don't have the the match with when is the in March, right? The the end of March, whenever it is. You still you're talking have about Tony little... Storm and Diana. Yeah, is that... it, it's same thing with like Orange and, and Roderick Strong. You have so much time before that match. You can give Aminata a win here. I don't know how, we, again, may, I don't know how it would play into things, but it would give you time to not only give her a win, you can build towards another match on TV where Storm beats her, but in that time, Aminata can get a couple of wins. And then she's, again, in a lot better position, I would think, creatively, you know, perspective-wise than she is right now. But I don't know. Odds are she'll probably just lose, and that'll be that. But also on the show, Esfinge and Star Jr. against Claudio and John Moxley, which all seems to be leading to Brian Danielson against Mystico at some point, as well as the entire BCC led by Danielson ending up in Arena Mexico at some point or another. Can you ever see yourself in Arena Mexico on a Friday night? I'd absolutely love to do it. Oh, There's awesome. so many of those guys that I would love to get in there and wrestle against. What I've seen of Hechicero is amazing. But, I mean, let's be real. <laughs> I've been doing this stuff at a high level for 20 years, and I would tie this guy in knots. I'd submit him in seconds probably so he's not the only one but yeah the, these cmll guys are oh <laughs> it's like they randomly got thrown on the AEW programming it's completely different than everything else on there but i love it yeah it's that's where AEW as wcw that's where it pays off because you do get moments like this that are straight out of WCW. Again, AEW at its best, sometimes it is WCW and at its absolute worst, sometimes you go, well, that's WCW. I mean, there's a lot of the same vibes, but one of the cool vibes is you get what these guys are doing and it's it's been pretty awesome. I do want to shoehorn this in because I love this show tonight i love it i've liked it anyway since its inception but they got a lot of names attached to it this year adam was on your show abdallah talking about jcw uh, yeah. jersey championship wrestling first round of the jersey j cup is tonight on triller plus whatever fight plus is now triller tv uh friday and saturday the j cup is going to be taking place Tony Deppin against Matt Mikowski, Jonathan Gresham against Alec Price, Manlike Derice against Masha Slamovich, Joey Janela against Kerry Morton, Nick Wayne against Marcus Mathers, The Great Sasuke against Speedball Mike Bailey, Excuse Jordan me. Oliver against <laughs> Jordan Oliver against Griffin McCoy. All I guess apparently throughout this tournament, Jordan Oliver's matches, all of them are also going to be for his JCW title. So as everything goes on in this thing, he's going to be defending his title. And then because it is a GCW JCW show, you got to have one scramble as a, a way in to, to try to get past the first round. Rena Yamashita, My Myron Reed, Cole Radrick, Billy Starks, Jack Cartwheel, and Charles Mason are all going to be involved in that one. The only match on the show as of now that is not part of the tournament is... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know you got to be jealous about this. I just Dominic, got goosebumps. 
Dominic Guarini and Kevin Koo will defend their GCW World Tag Team Championship against the Astronauts, Takuya Nomura and Fuminori Abe. Yes, protect your heads, gentlemen. There's going to be some unprotected headbutts in your foreseeable future. I know from spending time with Dom Guarini and Kevin Koo that this is a match that they have wanted for, I'm looking at my clock, years now. And I know they faced off against Abe in the past. I believe this will be the first time they've gone against Nomura. But I expect one of the hardest hitting matches that you'll see in all of 2024 tonight yeah just a, a cool card and again the, the 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 thing will pick up tomorrow too again for anybody that's got their their triller tv subscription fight tv subscription it's going to be on there tom coming up we've talked about it now for a couple of weeks it's finally here tanahashi and okada new japan new beginning show in osaka on sunday that as well as danielson and zach saber jr and the war games match you know quickly what do you think about what's going to take place I expect a big time angle of some sort to go down in this war games cage match. I don't know if somebody's going to switch sides. I don't know if we get a new definitive leader of the United Empire. Maybe it's just pure chaos. Maybe there's chaos within the Bullet Club. We've seen a little bit of tease dissension over the past few months with the War Dogs, but it's Will Ospreay's last match you know this guy is going to go all out. I believe this match was his idea. I believe this this match is his baby. So I'd expect to be expect it to be nothing less than spectacular. Tanahashi versus Okada. Well, that's going to be spectacular as well. And when we come back, we're going to have a spectacular last few minutes of this show, aren't we, Mike? We are filthy. You know how to hit these time cues perfectly. We'll be back. Rusty Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Semper, baby. Filthy Tom Waller here with you. Back to put a bow on this thing. Rusty Observer Live. New Japan, new beginning in Osaka. Tom, any more thoughts here? Wrapping that thing up. The the careers of Okada and Osprey when it comes to being New Japan proper regulars. No. Okay. I mean, I'm sure we're going to see them back. I'm sure we're going to see them back under the New Japan banner at some point. You know, I I don't think, regardless of how long. I mean, sure, sure, yeah. But even if Okada goes to the WWE or whatever he he does, I would assume that he has one you know final run back home with New Japan at least. I don't know. Nakamura has it, and they left at the same age, so there's still a lot of people probably hoping Nakamura comes back as well, too, and it doesn't look like that's going to be the case, but Brian Danielson, Zack Sabre Jr., Zack shoots on him, chokes him out. Zack's got to get the win here. I would think so. I mean, I would hope so. I know Danielson's got a lot going on here, but I want to see ZSJ get the win here. I don't know that if Zack shot on him that he'd be the one walking out the victor. Ooh. I, w- I watched some a little bit of Brian Danielson grappling a few weeks ago before the the ROH show, the ROH taping that I worked, and I saw him submitting some fools in the ring. Some very, some very pure tactical wrestlers were getting mm. subbed by the dragon. Yeah, speaking of pure, where's Yuta been here? I mean, is he going to make his way down to Arena Mexico at some point? He seems like he would be perfect for all this sort of stuff. He's got to he's got to get back uh, into action here again soon. Uh, at some king point of here. the low blow. Yeah, that's uh, so. got to get back into action here so you can <laughs> kick the crap out of him. That's what I'd really like to see here. I'd like to see you kick the crap out of Fred Rosser too, but I don't know, Tom. Where are you going to be next? Where am I going to be? I'll probably be back on these airwaves next week at some point, along with yourself, Mike. And if I'm not here, Brian Alvarez will be here holding down the fort, the big boss man coming at you, Wrestling Observer Live. Thank you. Talk to you again after a while.